Uh, my name is Timon George, uh, and I'm actually from Canada. Uh, I've been living in the U.S. for about two years. Yeah, so the main reason why I wanted to be a part of uh, an organization that is absolutely intended to represent um, historically uh, African-American students and black students um, that attend HBCUs across the country was that um, is, is an organization that brings together uh, very elite students uh, and very elite students that happen to look like myself. And uh, I thought that was a very empowering, that would have been a very empowering experience to be around uh, approximately 500 of uh, the top black and African American students from across the country. You know, the acceptance process, I had a, an interview, uh, which was actually over the phone, which I think is an interesting component of uh, why this situation is as uh, disappointing as it is. So the fact that I had the interview over the phone uh, made me acceptable um, in, an, in intelligence in my answers to the questions that were asked to me. Uh, and then after uh, the telephone conversation, I received a phone call back maybe about uh, less than 10 minutes later. Um, I assume the organizer had maybe uh, Googled me to find out what I looked like or uh, searched my LinkedIn or something of that effect and uh, found that I wear my hair in a way that is um, unallowable at the conference. Uh, so after that, I received a phone call back telling me that if I would like to attend, obviously it would be contingent upon uh, the removal of my hair. And uh, only then would I be allowed to uh, attend the conference. And if I were to do so, um, my spot would be there waiting for me. Uh, interestingly enough, um, being born and raised in Canada, which is a place that uh, holds tremendously different views on um, black people uh, than here in the United States, uh, I've never had to feel as though I am less than uh, because of my hair. Um, and it's interesting that at this point in my life, being uh, 27 years old as of late, that this would be the first experience that I would have where someone has framed my hair as an insurmountable, uh, I guess, hill that I cannot climb and that I cannot proceed from. And, and I think that's really the fundamental difference when you talk about uh, what the perceptions are maybe north of the border and what they are here is that um, people may look at you differently on a surface for an instant, but then as soon as you have a conversation with them and express your humanity and your beliefs and your intellect, then that for, uh, therefore anything after that is uh, irrelevant. Uh, so here on, on, on one side, there's an organization that is, is convinced and that has told me and conveyed to others like me uh, that we are uh, insufficient. The petition itself um, will be uh, a place that I believe um, people can share uh, the story with as many people uh, as they can. Millennials and uh, new generations think very differently uh, than the people before them. And because of that, we know that uh, change is possible and that uh, we as society uh, have the right uh, to change uh, what we deem as appropriate. When, uh, when Collins asked me to be a part of, um, I guess, this series, uh, I absolutely jumped at the opportunity. Um, in my belief, it is, is conversations like this that will create real change, especially when you think of uh, dialogues amongst uh, African American and black people in the United States. Uh, it seems like this is the um, front line um, of this conversation. It's tremendously important that uh, people really confront their own beliefs on things like hair, identity, conformity, uh, to examine if there are better opportunities or better answers than um, essentially just deferring or conceding that uh, they must be exactly how the um, dominant society must be. Uh, and, and, and if that uh, is, I guess, the real answers for success, if that is the real answers for uh, creating uh, successful communities and uh, creating wealth in your own community. Uh, it really seems like there are so many different components, but this, this particular piece um, fits in in somewhat of a niche in that um, it is a conversation that starts internally um, but reflects externally.